So now you're wondering, well, what is the scale the FDA is recommending in its child pew? Where did this come from? Well, this scale, which is now in every modern package insert, was originally developed in 1964 to predict mortality during surgery in patients with advanced liver disease and was then modified in 1972. And it's used for prognostic information and necessity of liver transplantation. There are other scales which are also used on the liver transplant surface, such as MELD. But as FDA found out, child pew is perfect for our purposes in terms of assessing cirrhosis and the extent to which it alters drug metabolism. Here are the elements of the child pew rating scale. There are three labs, bilirubin, albumin, and INR. INR is the international normalized ratio, and that looks at your PT compared to standardized norms and converts it to a ratio. There are also two clinical criteria, ascites and hepatic encephalopathy. It's important to notice that ALT, AST, GGT, ALKVOS are not part of the scoring system. And again, this is really the take-home message more than anything. The inflammatory markers have nothing to do with cirrhosis. It's the ability to make proteins. It's the clearance of bilirubin, which best correlates with the extent of cirrhosis. And here is the scoring system. You can see for the five elements, they are given one, two, or three points depending on severity. So for total bilirubin, if you're less than two, meaning a normal bilirubin, you get one point. If you're two to three, you get two points. And if your bilirubin is greater than three, you get three points. If your serum albumin is greater than three and a half, which is normal, you get one point. If it's from 2.8 to 3.5, you get two points. And if it's really low, less than 2.8, you get three points. INR, if it's less than 1.7, you get one point. If it's 1.71 to 2.30, you get two points. And if it's really elevated, greater than 2.3, you get three points. Ascites is graded as none, mild, or severe. That's one, two, or three points. And hepatic encephalopathy, if there's none, you get one point. If it's grade one to two, you get two points. And grades three and four, you get three points. So all you do is simply just add up the points. I actually have this bookmarked on my phone. You can look it up on Wikipedia if you want. All you need is just a table with the points and those three labs. Total bilirubin, serum albumin, and INR, as well as some appreciation of the clinical presence of ascites or hepatic encephalopathy. The child pew scoring interpretation adds up the points and says your class A, B, or C. Class A is five to six points, class B is seven to nine points, and class C is 10 to 15 points. Not surprisingly, your survival goes down as you have more and more liver disease. And so if you're class A, your one-year survival is 100%. If you're class C, it's 45%. So again, it's very important that you use this terminology, and it is now in the package inserts. Often they'll say child pew moderate or child pew B, child pew C or child pew severe, and very commonly they actually will provide the points. They'll say if your child pew score is 10 to 15, this is what you should do. If it's 7 to 9, this is what you should do for that particular medication. So here's a couple of examples on how to use this in clinical practice. So here we have an individual who's obese. You think they may have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You would like to put them on cariprazine for this particular person because she has bipolar depression. You get some labs and you say, wow, that AST is high at 78 and the ALT is high at 112. There's a lot of inflammation there. But again, we go to child pew for determining whether or not we have to adjust drug dosages. Her albumin is normal at 4.0. She gets only one point for that. Her INR is normal at 1.1. She only gets one point for that. Her total bilirubin is 2.1. She only gets one point for that. She doesn't have ascites and she does not have hepatic encephalopathy. So we add these all together. This patient has five total points. She very clearly is child pew A. Child pew A means no dosing adjustment is needed and you can treat her the way you would treat any other patient with that antipsychotic. Here's a second example. An individual with schizophrenia who also has an untreated and ongoing alcohol use disorder 
comes in with psychosis to the inpatient unit and is still drinking. So you have heard from your colleagues that because this person has some kind of liver disease, that oral paliperidone should be used because it is, quote, safe for people with liver disease. So somebody asks you about this and you say, you know, let's confirm this because I've heard a lecture about how to use child pew to determine whether medications can be used and what the appropriate dosage requirement is for people who have liver disease. So here's the labs for this gentleman. His AST and ALT are mildly abnormal at 56 and 66, but again, we add up the trial pew points. His albumin is low, 3.0, he gets three points. His INR is elevated, he gets two points. His total bilirubin is normal, only one point. But he has ascites, it's mild, he gets two points, and he has grade one hepatic encephalopathy, two points. So we add up all of these points, and it turns out that this patient has total points. This gentleman is child PUC. He has advanced cirrhosis. He has severe hepatic impairment. So what should we do? Can we use oral paliperidone? The best source of information for specific medication, especially those which have been approved in the last 10 to 15 years, is to go to the package insert. And the package insert for paliperidone clearly states that it has not been studied in patients with severe hepatic impairment. People with child pew class C have severe hepatic impairment. It has not been studied, and therefore, it should not be used. Other, other options? Well, you just have to go through the package inserts and see which medications provide guidance for initial dosing in patients who are child PUC. Lorazidone is one where they say very clearly, if you are a child PUC, you can use lorazidone, but the recommended doses are one-fourth of the usual dose with a daily maximum of 40 milligrams given with food. So again, it's the child pew scale. It's not AST or ALT, which determines whether a patient needs a dose reduction or whether the medication can be given at all. Whether the medication can be given really will be determined primarily by what's also in the package insert. And the labs for child pew are bilirubin, serum albumin, and INR. AST and ALT have nothing to do with cirrhosis. They have to do with inflammation. The other situation which might arise, and this is an important point, is that you have somebody who's already on a stable psychotropic dosage, no adverse effect. The question is, do I need to adjust their dose now based upon their child pew stage? And generally, the answer is, if the hepatic function has not deteriorated, you can leave them where they are at. But if there's clearly been a change, they're now child pew B and they used to be A, or they're now child pew C, and they used to be B, well, in those instances, it may be appropriate to reduce the drug exposure, particularly if side effects are present. In those circumstances, getting drug levels may be your best guide to what would be an appropriate dose for that particular patient in the new context of the more advanced liver disease.